great to be here in this cozy atmosphere. Yeah. I can see some people are just doing that, of wiping a sweater. It's, a, it's really a cozy and a hot environment. Uh, but I also feel at home because uh, most Muslims take off their shoes when we walk into our home. So I did that and it was really nice to feel that. How I just returned to my home again, I had that feeling. Um, ten minutes is an awfully short amount of time to talk about what purpose of life. Um, but I'll promise I'll speak as much as Aang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm turning on my back here as well. Uh, uh, it's actually in our culture, it's rude to turn our back to uh, people. Uh, so how about I just do this? <laughs> well, um, the Quran, which is the holy book uh, uh, of Muslims, has a guiding ver verse for us in this question, purpose of life. Chapter 3, verse 190, tells us that people who have innermost thinking, reflection, they look at the way heavens and the earth and everything in between are created and contemplate how it is created and then say, oh Lord, you did not create this in vain. So we are asked to first to think and then secondly we need to contemplate over how the heavens and earth are created and then we will discover our purpose of life. Let me do that for a minute or two. Um, but for instance, this table, coffee table here, the fact that it's certain dimension, circular, height, um, and its position in front of the sofa tells you something about its purpose. And uh, none of you tried to sit on the table, did you? <laughs> it's a coffee table. You can see that from the way it's made, and from its positioning with relations to everything else in this room. So we need to look at uh, the same thing, how we are made as human beings and how we are placed in this universe with respect to everything else. Um, and then question is, uh, if we have a purpose, is this a physical purpose, intellectual purpose or a spiritual one? Let us explore if it's a physical purpose. If you look at all the plants and animals in this natural world, I think we can all agree that they do have a purpose in the, in the ecolog ecological system, don't they? We have trees, they clean our atmosphere. We have bees, they make honey, but they also cross-pollinate different males and female plants together. Uh, we have cows who uh, eat the raw materials of grass, then turn it into milk that we give to our children. In fact, when, when we look at everything, they all add value to their environment. It's a, it's a physical value. They consume raw materials, they produce something better than that. That's why we have a living ecosystem. But what about us? Us human beings, we consume the best of what nature has to offer, what do we do to it? We go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and our relationship with nature is one way. You know, we, we always take from it. We never give anything back. Unlike the plants and the animals. That's why I do the, we have this environmental crisis, climate change. Uh, if we were to get off this planet, jump on spaceships, the whole planet would rejoice. Hey, we <laughs> 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 got rid of these pests. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when I say pests, I don't mean that we are pests. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the point of that is that we, we don't have any physical purpose in this life. Um, not entirely, but not the way plants and animals do it. Also, when we look at the universe, we realize that uh, if you know a little bit of astronomy, you would know that in order to make the solar system, you would need the whole universe. 
the solar system, the matter in it went through four generations of being cooked and prepared. So the whole universe exists to support the solar system, we could say, or solar systems across the universe. And then the solar system and the Earth is designed to support life. And when we look at life, we can see that it's designed to support human life. Without all everything else, we cannot live on this planet. So we are placed in a special place called Earth, which is like a cradle spinning around the sun faster than a speeding bullet. But yet we don't feel anything. I just recently came from overseas. <coughs> And the, the air buses were so good, I didn't feel anything. <coughs> I was wondering, am I flying or am I just sitting on the ground, or standing on the ground? It was a bit like that. Well, we are in the same position with respect to Earth. Uh, so we are being protected. We are being given uh, all these blessings uh, so that we can support our life. So if we don't have any physical purpose, then we must look at our intellectual and spiritual capacity. And when we do that, we realize that we have a huge brain. Huge brain. We respect the size of our body. And that is the most complex uh, organ in the universe. Just ask a brain scientist, ne neurologist. And then uh, I'll refer, I will go back to Quran again. In Quran, when God declares to angels, I will create a human being on earth, angels, their, their response is, are you going to create a being on earth who will shed blood and cause mischief while we glorify and worship you? God said, I know what you do not know. Which means I have a purpose in mind. And by the way, the purpose of life is what the maker, what our maker intended for us, Meaning of life is what we get out of life. There are different things. I want to make that distinction. Maybe we won't have time to get into the meaning part, but let's try to finish the purpose part. Uh, and what God does next is teaches that first human being the names of everything, and then demonstrates to the angels that this is a distinguishing <coughs> aspect of human being. In another place in the Quran, chapter 59, it says, خَلَقَ insan عَلَّمَهُ bayan in its Arabic original. He created human being and taught the human being the linguistic expression, bayan, in Arabic. So using the names, which are the words, we can express meanings. Why is this important? It's important because, and this is why we actually ask the question, is there a purpose of life? Because language is conveying meanings through symbols, isn't it? And then we understand uh, meanings through symbols as well. So we are actually, we, become, we excel in drawing meanings from symbols. Even if you had no education in life, as long as you can speak a language, you can find your purpose, according to this message in the, in the Quran. And that purpose, uh, let's look at the universe a little bit more. Uh, when we look at the natural world, another distinguishing aspect of the natural world is that it has art in it. There are works of art. And these are immense, thousands, millions of species of animals. There are just 50,000 species of butterflies. Did you know that? Such the diversity of creativity and art is displayed to our disposal. So in a way, we are invited, the universe is like a majestic <coughs> palace, and we are, the earth is like an exhibition hall, where God's wonderful works of art are displayed in symbolic terms, so that we, human beings, who are predisposed to understand meaning, to draw <coughs> meaning from symbols, can know that behind all of this, there is a maker and a creator. That is the ultimate truth, according to Islam. And that the great thing about that is, we can confirm that through observation and reflection with, the, with respect to how we live in the universe. And, uh, and the product of this, 
intellectual activity of finding God, then we want to be, have relationship with this entity, God. And that we do that through our worship. And I can, again, spend another 10 minutes arguing why that is the case. But if you really think about it, the only value we add to the natural world is the way we worship. No one else can find God and worship God. And uh, through the worship we also find the meaning of our lives. So in it, according to Islam, in a nutshell, yes, there is a purpose of life, and this purpose of life can be discovered in the way if we reflect on the universe. And, uh, and, and when we do that, we will find God, the artist behind the art, and then as a result of that, we will establish a relationship with God through worship. And then, because we are distant to God, then we will say, well, where is God? And how, how can I find Him? That set, sets us on a journey, and a quest of spiritual discovery, and that uh, also creates the meaning of our lives. And that's why it's different as well. Everyone has a unique, I know my time is over, everyone uh, has a different uh, quest and a journey, and maybe we can talk about that a bit more later. Thank you.